Oh, you like my phone case, by the way? Check that out. Ooh. You want me to sell this on the store or make my own custom ones? Would you guys buy a Brick Me Up Scotty phone case? Yeah. No? Yeah, no, probably not. Brick Me Up Scotty ringtone. It's just me going, this thing stinks. Yeah, we could do that too. Is it Lego or not really? Oh, uh, Brick. What's the I guess brick? I'm sorry, brick. the word brick. brick. Let me do that again. Yeah. Five hours to talk on that one. Oh my god. Main camera is there. Uh, have the backup camera, the camera, the plane is so massive. Yeah. Second camera, I have to kind of like look, overlook this thing. It's so big. So welcome back to Pick Me Up, Scotty. I'm Scotty. And I'm and not. Some of you may get that as a weird anthrax reference, but never mind. Welcome back, the Silver Spleen. Hey. Sean. Our military guru. Not really. And as requested by many of you, you guys have wanted to see this. So this is Zingbao's AC-130 gunship. XP-06023. Aha. 1,713 pieces. Did that say pieces? I don't have my glasses. C-130 is actually a fairly large plane in real life because of its designation as a cargo. Plane. That's what the C in C-130 stands for. AC-130 in this case meaning attack cargo, which doesn't mean that your cargo attacks people. It just means that it's the other thing that this can do. I did not know that. Yes, well, it's important to know these things. The AC-130 uh, was developed as the successor to the AC-47, which was of course based on the C-47 cargo plane, which if you've ever seen uh, any of the movies from World War II, especially about the Normandy invasion, those twin engine transport planes, uh, the things that like Eisenhower is always stepping off of to kind of wave to the troops, that was the C-47, worked really well during World War II and Korea, and even into the early part of Vietnam, the AC-47 was used. However, the AC-130 succeeded it. Yeah, so this is one of, I think, Ding Bao's bigger plane builds. Yes. Good news is, Unlike that T92 tank, if you guys haven't seen that review, check it out here. Oof. Uh, or, you know, check out some of the other military reviews we have done together. Yeah. But this one is actually really, I was really impressed with the build. Positively impressed. Yeah, and the quality too. And also, the question is, will it fall apart? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure if we dropped it from a high enough elevation, it would. So do you want me to pick it up first or you want to try to pick it up? I'm not, no, I don't want to try and pick it up. Okay, I'll pick it up for you guys just to show okay. you. Yeah. So, oh, oh, something fell down. See? No, that's just a small piece. My finger, expected. my finger hit that piece. We'll put I this back on. I hate when that happens. Okay, here, I'll grab it from so, the bottom here. There hold we go. Up here. Yes, yes, support there the baby's is. head. What you're seeing that is actually a little bit flimsy is Trooper, the wing. Trooper. Yes. Look at that. See? Oh, there it goes. It's not really being held down that great. And the reason is because it comes off really easy. It's a feature, not a bug. Yeah. It's actually kind of a cool looking weapon, man. Pretty much. Cut the head off with the blades. Uh, they do rotate. Yep, and it comes off really easy. As you can see, it's yes. only being held by, as Sean says, two, I don't know what the official term for these little- well, I like the, what you called it. What did you call it earlier? Nipples. Nipples. Little nipples. Two little nipples. Yes. That is holding this this Although gigantic- gray, Yeah, gray nipples. Wing, look at this thing. It's just, a, it's longer than the plane itself. Well, man. yeah, that's, that's generally the principle, yes. Uh, the wingspan has to be very significant. Wow, well, so, there you go, there's that. Yes. Whoops. The front. The nose. Is sturdy, as it were. the yes. nose. The front is certainly close enough to give you an idea of what it's supposed to be. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about these kinds of builds is that they're not exact, but they are evocative. What is this thing? And this is a gun, right? Uh, no. It could be any number of things. It could be a radio antenna. It could be what they call a pito or pitot tube, which helps to indicate airspeed. So I would assume that's what that is, but I don't know. It could be for refueling. I don't know what this thing is, that the white thing that's dangling. The one thing I keep knocking off there. I can't see. Oh, that antenna. is very likely the, I, I can't think of the exact word, something like FLIR, uh, forward-looking infrared radar. It probably has to do with, with the, the getting the sight lines. It's, it's missions, it's fire missions, if you will, are all line of sight. You have to be able to see the target to put rounds onto it. One of the Call of Duty games, there was that whole mission where you're actually sitting in, I believe it was an AC-130 and you're supposed to direct fire onto people. I can't even but remember that, that. I would assume that that's part of that system. Yeah. I think one of the issues I had with this build was that little piece. It's actually not really holding in properly. So I had to put a little extra transparent stud to kind of hold that in place. But uh, you know, that, I don't know, they, it's like a hexagon shape underneath yeah. anyway. So that's not a big issue. Okay. That's easy to fix. Now the cool thing is, we we'll take this off. Okay. Our wing, we should put it like right yeah, here. Yeah, like put it there. This hinge piece actually comes off. All right. And this can break down in pieces. So we can take this off right oh, here. All right. There, now we can look at the 
Very nice. The nose All right. up close. Nice. And it's really hard to get in there, but there's actually things going on inside. Uh huh. So let's try to pry this off. It does come off easy. That is there true. There you go. Oh, there you go. Very and nice. That's what it looks like on the inside. Nice level of detail. Nice use of colors. So you like that, huh? Yeah. So this would be probably your navigator or your electronics officer they, type of stuff. They do have a little entrance that you can come inside, a little door that opens up. Exactly. I don't know why it's like that. Oops. It's supposed to be like a staircase thing or just yeah, one it's, piece, it's, and then yeah. it comes off really easy like Again, that. Again, evocative, but not accurate. Not perfect. Right. And it has a little gun here, right? Yes. Well, turret. I wouldn't say little. That, that should be, I believe, the earliest iterations had two Comes off really easy. Gatling, Sorry. two 20 millimeter Gatling guns. This one now is a 25 millimeter GAU, 25 millimeter cannon shells, which means they explode when they hit something as opposed to rounds or bullets, which don't. And the, the uh, colloquially as it's known, a mini gun, something with a high rate of fire, will usually fire tracer rounds, which is the, the green or blue uh, or red. At night, you would sort of see this stream begin and then it would work and then you'd see it end. And so it's, it's one of the sort of visual characteristics for the work that these type of airplanes did. As long as it was landing on someone else, as long as their night was being ruined and not yours, it allowed you to sleep better. The only thing is, it can fall out pretty easy if you push down on it. Yeah. So you have to like make sure it's nice and snug from the inside. And then you got the cockpit area, right? Yes. So that's what I was saying. It's tricky to get the minifigures in there. You have to probably take all this off and they can sit inside. Here, we'll put the two, two pilots inside. Uh -huh. And even trying to slot them in is not that easy because they're using really weird seats. Yeah. But it still looks really cool. <clears throat> but there they are. Close enough for government work. Oh, he's falling over. That's OK. You get the idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have a little control panel there, too. They have little joysticks and the navigation yeah. panels you mentioned. So they're kind of old school looking, but they are. Stickers. Yeah, they're okay. not stickers at right. all. We'll close them up inside there. Although I suppose if we're looking at a Chinese model of an American aircraft, I, I kind of am glad that they're not doing really exhaustively accurate reproductions, because that would mean that they know. So we will never know. It has a little space underneath here, but I don't know what you're going to put in there. Yeah. Like nothing storage. You can put your ammo, I guess, or something like that. This section can come off. There's a little flap here. You pull that up, and, and it can separate. And I just knocked that off. There we go. Up. I'll let Sean look at this section. All right. This is what I would assume to be the fire control center. So you've got people sitting here that are looking at probably the feed from the FLIR and or any other kind of camera things. So that's cool. You got a little yeah. staircase inside. You can put yep. two more guys in there. Yes. So we put these guys inside. Okay. And these are proper seats. So they right. actually sit oh, okay. nicely inside. Oh. Barely fits in there, man. That's okay. It doesn't really fit in there because yeah. his head is hitting against the wall. Because well, he's wearing his helmet. Even if you took the helmet off, it might not fit. But I probably have to adjust that seat closer to the other guy. These are the people involved doing the actual work. Identify and destroy the target. What I like about the section though is that because the wing comes off so easy, you can actually easily go inside there. Unlike this one, you do have to kind of take off this top. It's not really like a modular plane. I guess that was how they would say it. Mm. But there you go. That's the second piece to it. So we connect it back. There you go. Ah! Snap this down. Now that section is good to go. Come to the last part, the tail. Uh -huh. Now this this is the thing that has always fascinated me. Even on the, the earlier iterations, there's a 105 millimeter howitzer. That's an artillery weapon. I can't imagine the kind of stress that an airframe gets put under from a 105 millimeter howitzer kind of knocking it sideways every time it goes off. That is, to me, the, the most impressive part about this whole concept. Terrifying. Very fragile though, for the build itself. Yeah. It'll just fall off really easy. And again, it's it's movable, but if you move it too much in and out, it'll just eventually pop off. And I have hate to kind when of that happens. Take this off and put it back in. Right. What I do like is the printing. Yes, the emblem, very right? nice. And it says CA on one side and I guess it mirrors it on the other side. Maybe it's the California CA. Air National Guard. Who knows? I don't think so. But you know, let's um, CAAC, Atlantic City. For this so, tail bit, it's probably the most fragile because a lot of things are moving. You have the rudder here that yes. moves. Yes. And it's very loose. So you do have to be very careful with that. These are the flaps, right? So yes. You have tail. See, it's only held in by one piece, man. Right. But you know, it's not as bad as the T92. It stays in there if it has to. Right. What makes it really weak is actually on the inside because the panel back here opens okay. up. Yes. I think they try to design it in an angle so it holds here. Right. Well, just this part opens up and this bottom part opens like that. Yes. And you know, your vehicle, speaking of, it does come with a little tiny right. vehicle which we'll look at. Yes. And it comes up in here of and course. then you close it up. So with that being said, I guess the biggest flaw of this set is this is very, very fragile. 
Right. So but as you said, I mean, considering everything that's going on. Yeah, we're moving everything, little things shit in here and there are coming off. But unlike the T92, yeah, it's easy to put you know, back together. It, yeah, it's very easy to put back together. And in general, yeah. Whoops. Put this back here. It doesn't fall apart when you look at it. But I was really impressed with this. This is actually really, really cool. Yeah. So one more thing that we can show the guys. There we go. So, lock it in place there. Good. It has wheels, so the wheels do retract. Ooh. Open it up from the bottom here. Yes. Unfortunately for this one on the front, it does come out. It kind of hits the uh, edge here. Yeah. Like the way they designed it, it hits right there. Right. Always wants to flop back in. So we'll open it. I'll try to do it this way. Turn it over. There you go. <laughs> one of the wheels here for this particular set that I bought, one piece wasn't quite straight, so it looks kind of lopsided. Okay. And these are a little bit weak, the panels that open up. You mm. have to be a little bit careful with that. You have to keep kind of putting pressure onto it because they're only being held by a few things. Oh, okay. And again, not accurate per se, but evocative, and that's all we ask for. Yeah, and once you put the wing back on, it's just like that. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Very nice. Okay. I guess we can talk about the wing too. Yeah, we didn't talk about the wing yet. Yeah, well, not a lot, but. Move both laps. It uses propellers, but it also has not exactly jet engines, but turbo assistance. These are, I'm assuming, fuel tanks because there's no fins on them. Because one of the things is the you want an AC-130 to stay, as they say, on station as long as possible. So you want to make sure it has as much fuel as it can carry because it's going to be, you know, rolling around in, in large, slow circles for quite a few hours at a time. The propellers like these pieces. Looks like they have little engines on that's here. That's what I'm saying. That's the air intake for the turbo. Ah. It does look a little bit fragile, but it hasn't really fallen off on me. It's right. a little bit tricky to put these pieces on because sometimes these builds, they build from bottom up. So you have to like build it and then you put it in and push it up. So there's a chance when you're moving it around, it might just fall down. Right. But you know, as you've seen so far. Yes. It's pretty okay. Yeah. I should put it backward once before. I was like, does it go in like this? And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Looks cool like that. Yeah. So if you're like me and you do these things wrong, it'll look okay like that. Go backwards really fast. So here is the tractor. Okay. I'm going to pass it off to Sean. All right. Now, I don't necessarily think that this would drive up inside. This is uh, the sort of thing that they'll use. And you've seen this if you've ever taken a commercial airline flight. You see something very similar. Whereas for your flight, they were delivering baggage. These are used, obviously, to resupply the ship, whether it's food for the crew or ammunition for the weapon systems, things of that nature. Um, but this is nice. It's it's a fairly sturdy. It's, it's very snug, this, this connector system here, which is nice. You can kind of move it around. It rolls easily, which is nice. That seems almost straight, a little too straightforward, but you'd be surprised sometimes with these things, the way that they don't work in an M1 Abrams tank. There you go. Yeah. There we go. I think they designed it so like this thing can kind of fit in here. Yeah, well, of course, you know, yeah. I mean, for the yeah, for the, the sake of the set, yes, you can do that. Besides that vehicle tractor thing, you can probably put your own little vehicle in there. It's got to be pretty small, though. You have a little bit more room when you put the second attachment on, like you see here. So hopefully you can gauge from this whether or not you want to put more things inside. It's up to you. Now let's talk about the minifigures. Okay, so we're going to name these minifigures. I'm going yes. to go to our last military video, okay. which is our lovely T92 tank one. So we got six minifigures here. Four of them are green, two of them are white. All right. First minifigure. Harry so, Bush Nunn. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look at the pilots where they have like the visors on. Although these do seem somewhat bigger than these usual, looks like, don't they? These look like VR goggles. I don't know. Or, I don't know if this is like NVG, a, most likely. My yeah. guess, because again, remember the AC-130 primarily operates at night. I'm being generous to say maybe they intentionally made them bigger to evoke the night vision goggles the pilots might be wearing. That's my I, guess. I, I think it's just a crap design because it sticks out like a VR goggles. It's just, right. He looks googly, yes. googly eyes. It looks really weird. Is he looks nice and angry. I like the printing on him. He's got like a badge on there and a walk, course. like a little walkie yes. radio thing on him. Oh, that, that's probably part of his escape vest. A couple patches on the back, printed on there on the back yeah. as well. So that's interesting. And this one is Amash Faruqi. I hope I said that right. Amash, you're the one who bought the T92 and said it was perfectly fine. That's good for you. So you're the pilot of this yes. AC-130. Yes. Next up, we got the second pilot. The co-pilot. Co -pilot. Their, their hands are gray, which would therefore indicate they're wearing probably gloves. Nomex gloves. No badge. So I think, yeah, definitely, you see? Yeah, that's right. Different, different printing. It's different. He's smiling. He seems very happy. 
Uh, oh yeah, he's got a more, yeah, it looks again, more detailed than the other one. Pouches in the vet. Yeah, there's, there's a slight bit more detail. And this one is Josuk222. He said, oh my goodness, why the hell does it broke all the times? Makes right. me mad. Yeah. That's a T92 tank, man. Because you were lucky you just had to watch it. We had to be in the room with that piece of... Then we got like the, the two... The crew members. These guys don't have silly goggles because they wouldn't be using night vision goggles to look at the, the their targeting screens. Okay, the funny thing about him is he's actually wearing exactly the, yeah, he's wearing exactly the same as the co-pilot. Right. So he has no badge. Right. And we exactly Again, the as, same an, body. as the air crew, he also must be, you know, equipped for worst case scenario. And this is Mr. Star Killer, who actually requested for this video review. There you, so go. Here you go. We should have made him the pilot, but that, that's what happens. That's life, man. Exactly. Well, this guy that. doesn't seem very happy. Yeah, he, right? looks, he looks nervous, man. But he but he does have the badge. He's got the same top as the pilot, or the, whatever we've designated as the pilot. Is that a white t-shirt? It looks like it. Bad news. Okay, you don't wear a white t-shirt. This one is Dean Brooks, who said this set might fall apart. Right. Luckily, it hasn't really. It's hanging in there. Yeah. So there you go, Dean. All right. All right. There you go, Dean. Congratulations, you've been promoted to wing walker. There you go. These two guys on the ground? Yes, one of whom has a beard but no discernible chin, which is a bit odd, and believe me, I know what that feels like. These guys are almost look, as you said, they look like what? They look like the guys from Star Wars, right? In the yeah. winter scene? Like, yeah. are they just using Star Wars helmets for these guys? It's very possible. Neither one of them have the, what we've now probably incorrectly identified as the pilot's badge. I don't know, but they don't have that. This guy does have a beard, which, for Air Force ground crew, probably you're not allowed because you might have to wear a gas mask. And this one is Mazine Kaiser. Mazine Kaiser 30. There you go. You said he will not buy the T92. I don't blame you. You're lucky, you got the beard, so you, you're the manliest of the minifigures. And last but not least. Last but not least, someone who seems, he does not seem morally conflicted by his job, which is good. Eric Nipple. Yeah, he's been named before, man, it's all good. Eric Nipple. Okay. There you go, Eric. All right, you guys, it's dimension time. Now, how the heck am I supposed to measure this thing? I'm not just gonna put a couple of base plates underneath and see how we do. Oh man, you guys, look at that. So I kind of had to do like a bird's eye view to kind of see where it's gonna start and end. It's definitely growing over two base plates. So that's already 64 studs. I'm guessing it's an extra maybe four to five studs. So maybe 69 studs by length. I'm just kind of wild guessing. Look at those wings, man, more than 64 studs. We're looking at around 79 studs by length. It's just a wild guess, man. You know, you can go in there and guess for yourself. For the width, you're looking at about 23 studs from the tip of that fuel tank, I guess, and the propellers, something like that. It's just a rough estimate. Y'all got your one by four bricks, here we go. Look, oh, it's about 20 bricks. It's just like slightly over, but there you guys go from the top down. And for kicks without the tail, it is around 10 bricks in height. And that's with the wheels down, by the way. There you go! Useless dimensions. So overall, I was actually really impressed. I love the size, the scale. The build was actually really, really fun. Mm. I gotta mention that building it was not boring. It didn't feel monotonous. Everything felt like it was all coming together really fast. And no stickers, all prints. Very nice. Yeah all prints on everything, on the wings and all that kind of stuff. That's really cool. Yes. And what do you think? Final, final words, final say? I like it. Uh, as I, I always tend to say in these things, it is, it is certainly not an accurate reproduction, but it is more than adequately evocative. And that's really all I ask, that you look at something like this and you go, oh, that's supposed to be, an a in this case, an AC-130. Really nice job. Manages to hit, to me, all the high points, all the important stuff. It got all the important details right. And it is better, well, I mean, what isn't better than a T92, but this is a very nice build. All right, you guys, so there you go. AC-130 gunship from Zingbao. It is yes. available on breakmeupscotty.com if of you want to buy yours, you know. Yeah, and you should. So until next time. Yes. You do the honors. Yeah, why not? Break me up, Scotty. Boosh. This is why, as, as you may know this, the government issue eyewear that you're given when you're in the military, uh, colloquially, colloquially, are known as BCDs, birth control devices, because if you wear the glasses that Uncle Sam gives you, you just are not gonna be a hit with the guys or girls. You're just not, so that's why they call them BCDs. Winner, winner, big chicken dinner. Uh, that's the other acronym, BCD, bad conduct discharge, big chicken dinner. Yeah, maybe I'll sell this one later. Very nice. You know, I'll get the video review. Sean and I will sign the wing, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I promise that I will not have put any of the minifigures in my mouth. Now we're gonna pull it back out. 
Yes. Yeah, mm. let it roll out, baby. Where are you? There now, you are. As, as I think we've already mentioned, the, the AC-130 is, is a gunship built on the existing C-130 frame. And I would definitely encourage people to watch, I'm sure online you can find documentaries about the C-130 because this is just one of the interesting variations that this airframe has gone through and documentaries will tell you about all the different kinds of things they've done. Now one thing you, you, we haven't pointed out yet but you'll notice is that both weapon systems are on the left or port side of the aircraft so that basically what the AC-130 does is it finds out where its area is and just kind of does a slow circle around it because that way it always sort of keeps the intended target in front of them. So did you want to talk about the inside or we'll talk yeah, about that later? we can talk about that. Okay, we'll in talk a second. about that later. We can talk but thanks to the magic of editing, it may happen now, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? We never uh, know how we're going to cut this thing out. Literally with a saw, just, just to annoy people. Uh, that'll be fun. Yes. Maybe one day.